to everybody if you're joining us for the first time today. My name is Rochelle Eat, and I am the Cash Flow Nurse. Every Sunday, we're here bringing you great content on real estate investing. We're here to educate and get you excited to the wealth building magic of multifamily investing. So every Sunday I bring in some rock star guests who would talk about their journey and how they got started and how, how they're doing and what made them do it. So we're gonna learn about their strategies and how they were able to scale, go from no, no investment at all to managing some multifamily investment. So whether you are a passive investor trying to learn whether this investment is right for you or you're an active investor getting started in the real estate space, you are in the right place because you are with like-minded individuals who, and we're here to uplift everybody. So welcome and y'all, I just realized that this is a holiday weekend. So thank you for joining us today. Um, I have Debbie Conti, my co-host, who is um, joining us from Ohio. Yeah, the cold, uh, cold Ohio today. <laughs> Let me just say that um, I'm not going outside. So um, very cold. So thank you so much, Rochelle. Um, Debbie Conti, I have a W-2 in corporate America and started in real estate last year. So I'm a newbie and Rochelle is taking me along for the ride. So love that. And it so. has been so fun so far. Yeah. So. Yep. Um, Debbie and I are members of the, the, the Rod Cleef Mentorship Program, so that's how we met. And and just like our guests who are, we're about to introduce, you know, being part of a mentorship program is, is a great way to get started just because you get to know people who've done this before. And we're gonna we're gonna be talking about that. So without further ado, our guests tonight are Abraham and Nancy, this power couple who are travel nurses turned apartment owners. So how many of you know people who have gone from like a W-2 and become owners, entrepreneurs themselves? I mean, we there are a lot of people who've done this, but, but this couple, what's special about them is that they hustle like everywhere. They travel throughout the country and yet they manage to buy and operate apartments. So we're gonna hear about this story. Welcome Nancy and Abraham, how are you doing? Hi, Rochelle. Thank Hi, you so much for having us Absolutely. tonight. We're doing good. We're doing really good. Very well. Thank, thank you. you. Well, thank you so much for um, finally saying yes to my invitation because I think it's, I've been hounding you guys, like literally texting you for for several months now, trying to get you um, to be a guest. And finally, you said yes, but it, it's because of the, the schedule. I totally get that. Um, so tell us about yourself. I know a little bit about your background. I kind of know, you know, how you got started, but I would like to share with the audience how you went from nursing into getting into a mentorship program and just like acquiring 229 units. So how do you, how did you get, how did you get there? Yes. So I, and Abraham loves it when I tell this story. Um, because I didn't know anything about real estate uh, before, right? Like at all until Abraham came into my life. So five years ago when him and I, you know, got together, um, he told me that I needed to read the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So that's how I started in real estate, right? Like, oh my God, like I have no assets. I have just liabilities, right? Abraham was already with his mom and, and, and his brother, like his family. They were already in real estate. They were starting their portfolio. They had uh, seven units that I was blessed enough to marry in. Um, so when we started traveling, like we just, you know, put our head down and, and we made it a goal of ours that we wanted a hundred doors. That was our goal. Um, so we started traveling to, you know, increase our income because as a travel nurse, we make a little bit more than staff nurses. And we, we hustled, like you said, you know, we were working six days a week, pretty much since 20, 2020. 2019, no, 2019, we were working six days a week. Um, Abraham and I would like have little competitions between each other, see who could work like more days in a row because we had a goal, right? Like we wanted to save uh, $1,250 a week me $1,250 a week, him. So $2,500 a week for $10,000 a month. 
So it could be $120,000 a year, right? That was our goal, like day one when we started. So we put our head down, right? And let's get to work pretty much. So we started, you know, buying more uh, small multifamily here in our hometown, here in Bronzeville. We're from Bronzeville, Texas. And yeah, we grew our portfolio up to 21 doors. It was the seven plex, the six plex, four plex, uh, duplex, and two single family homes, I believe, is what we, and what we were doing, we were doing uh, buying cash, like everything cash, that's what we were doing. Wow. Um, we didn't know we, we didn't know any better. Well, not that we didn't know any better, just that that's the only way that I that I grew up doing. You know, I was very fortunate that my family was involved in in, in, in real estate and they they can never scale knowing what we know now. Mm -hmm. Right. But so you can only manage so you can only do so much by yourself. And that was my mentality, right? You know, it's where I very I didn't want so many hands in the pot. I mean, we kind of tend to go that route, most of us, right? Like we don't want to share the profit, we don't want to but at the same time, if you don't share the profit, then you don't, you get to, you get to, you get to handle all the responsibility. You don't get to share the responsibility. Just either, you. Right? Yeah. yeah just you. So you can only grow so much and you can't really scale. And then I think that was a, from the, from the very beginning, that's something that I, I needed to overcome where I needed to be able to, to delegate and understand that, you know what, I don't have to do it all by myself. And there's other people that, that. You know, for the most part, people are are, are like minded, right? And then when you surround yourself with those people, right? And that's why, like you said, Rochelle, the, the mentorship is so important. But um, but yeah, we were we were doing it the Dave Ramsey route pretty much. You know, we were just uh, no oh debt God. and uh, and buying everything cash, which 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 not you know it's not it's not this it's it's a get rich not a get rich quick it's a get rich eventually kind of strategy, right? So that's what we were doing, you know. Hold on, I, I just want to oh. add something. So, was it a requirement to be in a relationship to reach to read rich, rich dad, poor dad? <laughs> You're like, <laughs> we're gonna start dating, but here you go. Here's the book. I need you to read it. <laughs> he never said that it was a requirement, but I'm pretty sure it was a requirement. So. <laughs> I'm glad I read it because I got I got to hand it to Nancy. You know, so I I thought I was I thought I was pretty good with money, but. Uh... But Nancy has a lot of discipline and, and, you know, she had, she had savings. She really did. She had savings that was not working for her. And um, she really just uh, understood that, understood what the, what it cost to make, to, to, to trade time for money, whether she knew that term or not, or, and whether she knew what an asset was or liability was, she really didn't have that many liabilities other than, other than a couple. Right. And, um, but we all do. Right. But uh, the, I guess the, mo the most important thing that I wanted to, not that I wanted to teach, but that I, that, I that I was very fortunate enough to be taught early on was that you don't buy things that don't make you money, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're going to buy something that's gonna, that's not going to make you money, then buy something that makes you money to buy that liability. So it's just wish that poor dad. And 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 uh, it's a very easy read and it just pretty much sums it up. What you, If you just do that, mm -hmm. you would be okay, in my opinion. But yeah. I love how, though, like, I don't know if it was luck that, you know, that Nancy had the same sort of mindset, although, you know, like, it, she was probably doing, di doing it differently, but she already had that mindset of saving, of not, like, squandering money, like, the way that I'm seeing a lot of nurses do now, you know, they, they get that COVID pay, $10,000 a week, and then what do they have anything to show for it? No. So I, I think like th that that was pretty um I guess fruitious that 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 you guys came together and you guys were already on the same page pretty much because a lot of times some relation you know some people some couples will get together and and one wants something different and the other wants something entirely different, right? Yes, definitely. We were definitely very less you know to have come into each other's path to cross paths you know I'm a, I'm a strong believer you know God puts the people the correct people in your path and I know that's why he put Abraham in my path that's and, right. <laughs> <laughs> his path, right so um yeah it, it was it was just you know God's doing um, I for sure but um yes yeah, so we, we were on that path right we were going to continue to do that because you know our goal was 100 doors and we knew the only way we knew how to do it was you know that work hard save money and go buy something cash right uh we didn't know that we could buy anything bigger than six units or seven units we were working uh you know to like monopoly right you get your little houses and trade it in for something bigger so we were working on, on that 
Um, and then in, I think it was early August, 2022, uh, Abraham, big TikTok uh, lover, uh, <laughs> ran into an ad from a mentorship program. So, and it was Tyler Devereaux from Multifamily Mindset. So he's like, hey, let's go to this. It's a free event, right? And I'm like, okay, so are we off? Yes, we're both off. Okay, so let's go. And we were in California. We were in Walnut Creek at that point. Yeah. So we we ended up going. We did the mentorship. We we did the we did the the free day, and uh, Nancy was kind of hooked, and I was already hooked because what started me on the on the large multifamily was we tried, we tried, we had built, we had built uh, twenty units, and you know, in hindsight, you know, I'm, I'm going to be very very honest. I'm I'm very proud of those twenty units. We worked our asses off of those twenty units, right? So, and they were cash flowing and they were cash flowing and we made mistakes and we lost some money but at the end of the day we 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 were doing it and you know so but when i tried to go that year before we went to the mentorship program we tried to buy 100 units ourselves mm -hmm. right we're in a position we were going to put we were going to put our 20 units as collateral we went to the bank and we ran into so many roadblocks and well you don't have experience you don't have experience. You don't have the you have the net worth, but you don't have the liquidity. You don't have the relationship with the bank. And then we were going through like uh, uh, credit unions and you know local banks. And I had I just was not educated enough to 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 take down that kind of deal. And that's where I started to look. Okay, so then, well, wow. you know why we why why reinvent the wheel? Start looking at other people that that have hundred units, that have one hundred twenty units, two hundred units, right? So that, that's what kind of led me to to, to that Tyler Devereaux's multifamily mindset kind of mentorship. And and that was it, right? Because I told Nancy, like, look, we have this on a unit, we're gonna go look. And and we 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 were, we we just could not get we could not get to the LOI. You know, we submitted mm -hmm. the LOI, we submitted two LOIs, and it was a it was a disaster. We ended up losing the deal. Which in hindsight it was a great it was a great it was a blessing, it was a blessing in the style because you know interest rates kind of what they did. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we needed to educate ourselves more. And that's why we ended up doing the mentorship program. And whether you you know, I, I think it was a huge blessing because now Nancy knows, if not knows more about handling multifamily asset than I do. Right. So, you know, it was a it, it, the education is key in my opinion before you start to go big. So I love that. Debbie, were you were you about to say something? Yeah, no, just curious. When you hit that, because I know you mentioned before, it's like keeping control, kind of just doing it, you know, like you guys are just doing it together. Did you make that mind shift before you joined the mentorship program that it's more of a team sport or were you still at that point still thinking we can just do it ourselves? How, where were you there as you joined? Yeah, no, we were, well, Abraham more than I, he was still at, no, like we can still do it by ourselves. You know, like we're learning it, you know, let's take everything that we're learning from them and let's go do it ourselves. He he was still, it took him a while, I'm going to say uh, up until we got into our first deal, that maybe right before, a week before that he was like open and, and he finally is like, okay, you know, like let's, you know, we have to do this. This is business, this is relationship business right like let's we have to do it with other people we have to grow with other people yeah. but yeah it, it was harder for abraham than it was for me it's, it's still hard for me because you know at the end of the day it's still an investment but you know the people that we met during the mentorship program kind of just you know one one person in particular told me it's the same thing as doing a 401k in other words you don't you know you, you really don't you're not on a first name basis with the person that's investing the money for you right you're not you're not on a first name basis with 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 anybody that's doing anything in that company, right? So you know what's the diff the difference is is that you get to own the asset instead of letting somebody else dictate what you're gonna what you're going to own, right? So we we that that kind of that kind of opened me up to like okay we need to we need to we need to do this right. I mean we've done it this other way and you know there's all these people that have so many assets under them saying the same thing. I mean there's it's just you know, why go against the grain? And it was a huge blessing. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, if you want to, you know, what I've learned is that if you really, if you really want to grow, you really need to start to trust other people and work with like-minded people. It doesn't mean you do it with everybody, right? Yeah, you trust <laughs> but, but verify everything. You trust but verify, you kind of date that person for a good while and you don't rush into it. You, 
you don't rush into it. You use what you've learned and then you ask and you educate yourself because at the end of the day, it's still an investment. And you know, anybody that says you can't lose money in real estate has not bought real estate, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can lose money in real estate, at, but at the end of the day, you don't lose as much, right? So I, I think I think it still comes with its risks, but you you mitigate that risk with having an asset that's producing. So absolutely. So prior to joining the mentorship and when you were, you guys were doing everything on your own. So you literally are buying it and, and then um, asset managing it, you're operating it and all that. So it's just all you, is it? Who else is in your team apart from Nancy? <laughs> his brother and his mom as well. Yeah. So it, was, it was the four of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, sure. and I can just imagine how much work that is and just like how much stress that is too. Like you, you, it, it's all the new and, and you know, like you literally have to solve <laughs> all the problems and you don't have, you, you know, like you may have your family members, um, but then you don't really have the network to bounce ideas off of. So yeah. what was, what was the biggest um, adjustment? You said Abraham, that it's still hard for you. Yeah. To, you know um but what what is the biggest change that you had to go through um going from doing everything yourself to partnering with people in your mentorship program or outside your mentorship program for for me personally it's been that giving control letting go you know not, not having all that control myself because abraham i don't know he says that i'm very yeah, you're very type A. Very type A. I don't believe so, but he says it a very type A. So I want to be able to control everything. And and I can't, right? It's it's teamwork, right? We all bounce ideas of each other and we all come, you know, to an agreement. So it's not just what Nancy wants, you know, it's what everybody wants, right? So that's been my challenge. Just I'm I'm still adjusting and I'm getting better at it and you know, <laughs> trusting people, obviously, right? So, but yeah, that's what I've had the most challenges with. Yeah. And for me, it was the the empathy. I mean, we're nurses, right? So we we deal with empathy every single day for the last 12, 13 years, right? So then when we, you know, Tyler, Tyler, Tyler specifically, when, you know, when he told us, he's like, look, at the end of the day, you're, you're, you're providing somebody a home, right? Mm -hmm. And what kind of home are you going to provide? And when you partner with other people, they're not going to, they're going to see for the most part, what, what we, what we realize is most people, they, they kind of see the bottom line, right? Why buy, why buy a $2,000, why buy a two or why buy a $400 cabinet when you can set up for a $200 cabinet, right? Mm -hmm. And why buy this kind of flooring when you can set up for this kind of flooring, right? But at the end, you know, we, Nancy and I struggle, right? With like, well, I mean, the money's there. Why aren't we going to use a, to me, I, I'd rather buy once and not have to worry about it than, you know, buy three or four times. And, and you know, so you run into that. We run into that a lot and so, we were continuing to run into that. Right? I think so, it comes down to the control, right? Yeah. Because, you know, we would, I want to give the best to, mm -hmm. to the residents, right? And not, you know, I don't want to, I, I know we have a responsibility for our investors, right? And, you know, I love truly love my investors and i want them you know my investors are nurses so i want them to have you know the returns that we're projecting but at the same time i don't want to meet that projection at the expense of the residents right so i i'm not i would never take a shortcut for uh, a resident right or, or doing the remodeling for a certain apartment oh, okay like the cabinets right or whatever or the flooring right like no let's spend a little bit more money but you know the residents are going to be taken care of they're going to be they're going to have a really nice home right because we're charging them more for everything right mm -hmm. and you know the investors are still going to get you know the returns so that's... yeah i would say that's that's tricky because because you you know like especially if you are you know like you have investors who are investing because of you and you know like you have the responsibility but then at the, at the same time you want to have a product that that you can that you can proudly offer the community and also the second part of that is that your the highest expense is turnover so if you can keep your residents happy and they they will stay at your place in the long run it's it's going to come back to you tenfold because you're you're having um to spend less in you know like in turnovers in you know like those the the, the period of vacancy 
Um, so I do, I've come across that as well because, you know, like, do I want to keep these tenants happy and let them make them stay? Or do I want to cut expenses and, you know, increase my NOI? So, Absolutely. yeah. So how do you guys mitigate that then? How do you come into terms? <laughs> I know it's a challenge, but how do you have, have you accepted that fact already? And you're just like, all right, this is not a battle that I'm going to, I'm going to fight. I know, I know this is not the answer that everybody's going to want to hear, but education is key. And it was, you need to, you need to make money when you purchase the deal. And it was, you need to buy, you need to buy right, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you buy right, you have a lot of leeway to make the mistakes and to, and to, because, you know, at, at, no matter how much due diligence you do, right, there's always going to be something that comes up, right? Now you want, want to take care of the big ones, you know, roof, electrical, water, plumbing, you know, kind of stuff like that. But if you, you start to break down the walls, you start to peel out, you start to peel the layers, you're going to find problems, right? So you need to be, you need to buy right. You know, or that's why it's very important not to jump into the, so, you know, you have $250,000 to invest and those are your only $250,000 to invest. Well, then you need to buy right. You need to take time. You need to, you need to be patient. You need to do due diligence and you're going to miss out on some deals when you do that. Right. So, but you know, there's always going to be deals. I hate the, I, I, I despise the car salesman mentality to where this is the last this is the last BMW that's ever going to be built. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like that doesn't that doesn't exist. You know, it just there's always going to be a deal, right? And we've passed out, we've passed, we passed up on some good deals because we just, well, we're focusing on this one and we're doing our due diligence on this one. You know, we don't wanna, we don't wanna, we don't wanna separate our focus, right? So I think buying right is the best thing you can do. You make sure as much as you can that when you purchase this property, you're making money, you make you're gonna make money off of it. Right. And, and and you mitigate your risk that way. And you owe that to your investors, you owe it to yourself to really take the time and be patient. And it doesn't mean do it slow. It just means that, you know, you really need to do your due diligence, you know the market. You you walk the building for God's sakes, go see the building. You know, <laughs> like I just we, we uh, have a friend of mine that he doesn't go. He just, he, he, he looks at it online, you know, gets an aerial view, has somebody else go look at it and he buys. And you know what I mean? That's fine. You can do it that way. But for me and Nancy, we, yeah. we definitely want to go touch it and see it and walk it and, uh, and uh, you know, pray over it and all that, you know, so we, 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 we're very, uh, we're big fans of going and see the property, but I think buying right is a very long answer, but you need to buy right. And the only way you can know to buy right is if you know what you're buying and you know how to buy. So, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, if there is one thing that people are going to walk away from this webinar today, it's it's buy, right? And I cannot agree with that more because I am one of those um, investors in my early investing days where I was just like so excited and I see people buying all buying sight unseen all the time. So my first um, our first investment was sight unseen and it, it bit me in the behind after that. So now I know to like even when I partner with people, you, I go see, verify the asset, we walk it, at least see the, the, the property, I mean, the area mm -hmm. and see, see, see the neighborhood, you know, and then go look at the, do your due diligence and walk the property. So absolutely. Now for passive investors, I understand you, you can't do that all the time, but if you can, you know, for me personally, I ask my investors to go, like if they have a chance, um, what I do is that I arrange something for them and the investors will go look at the property because I really want them to see it. Um, not only to kind of give, you know, give myself credibility of telling them like, hey, I told you so, right? But actually to, to um, because seeing is different than from what you're hearing, right? So, and I want them to have the satisfaction as well that they were able to go, touch, look, talk to people in the neighborhood. So what you said, Abraham, is, is key. Buy right and absolutely get educated on, on what you're buying because you, you don't know whether you're buying a flop or not. Mm -hmm. So You know, and you know, I mean, we were taught to delegate, right? So if mm -hmm. you don't, I, look, I don't like, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'll, I'll subtract and add all day. And for me, it's very simple, right? If the if the property, if the prop what the property makes, you subtract, you subtract expenses, and what you have left over is your profit, right? 
to me that is that is my that is my that is my underwriting for me okay. that's me in other words i don't I, I really don't like to complicate it right but i understand that it you just can't you can't do that on a 250 or 600 unit right so then i really do not like to underwrite right so then you find somebody that that you trust that you date for a while quote unquote right and then you have them underwrite the deal for you and and you go from there but you still you still need to know what you're looking at yes because we not we might not know everything that a physician knows but when when we look at labs or when we look at something when we look at a, we will look at an x-ray when you look at a ct you know you you need to know what you're looking at ish right mm -hmm. right you don't have to become an expert in it for you to do it for you to understand the basic principle of it right so if you understand the basic pr principle of underwriting of due diligence you know, that's as far as you need to go. But at the end of the day, these are very important things. So then you delegate that out and you find somebody that can do the underwriting. You find somebody that can do the due diligence. Right. And you and you, and you do, in my opinion, in our opinion. Right. Because you can do it all. Mm -hmm. right? And you're not the best at everything, despite what you might believe. Right. And um, so, you know, it's very humbling to 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 sit in front of somebody that does something better than you. And you need to be able to be coachable and teachable. Right? Yeah. So, so along those lines, so now that 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 you you're partnering with other people now, so what has your role been? Uh, have you taken on the role of of finding deals, of capital raising, or doing due diligence? What is it? So we're doing investor relations, so capital raising. That's what we're focusing on. I really, um, at one point we thought maybe let's just do JVs instead, you know, of doing the syndication model. But I still went back to doing the syndication model because I really want to help other nurses, you know, get their money working for them. Like I really want them to be able to have this opportunity and they don't have to worry about doing all the let work that comes with it, right? So what better than a nurse, you know, to help another nurse to make their money work for them. So I, I, you know, that's that's what we're focusing on right now, the investor relations. But we definitely do also uh, take on the role of boots on the ground if needed because of the flexibility that we had. Uh, we did spend a full month at one of our properties in 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 Kentucky, uh, you know, helping with with the renovations and turning the units and getting rid of the property management company and bringing in a new property management company. So. <laughs> Abraham, you're like you look like you you have some some memory of some flashbacks from that. Well, well I mean that's that's um, I'm I know I'm very fortunate to come from a construction background and you know being able to to know what a linear foot is and knowing what kind of floor to buy and how to install a cabinet and doing that and stuff like that. But Nancy, Nancy does not you know Nancy hasn't picked up <laughs> you know so it was uh, it was it was uh, interesting it was a very um, very interesting time in our marriage because you know it was I have my opinion she has her opinion and you know it kind of you know it was it was our very first property and um, it kind of bit us on the ass <clears throat> bit us in the ass it's a good property it's an amazing property but oh my gosh there is um some tribulations with that property, you know, so, you know, we, we had to take, we had the, we had to take the, the reins and go and see the property and be there. And we were there. We were there Monday through Sunday, seven days a week, 12, 13 hours, you know, getting stuff started and uh, going to home Depot, you know, picking up floor and picking up this, picking up that, you know, finding contractors, you know, it was, it was, uh, it wasn't, uh, it, was it was, uh, I epic. learned how to lay floor. Yeah. <laughs> you learned how to lay flooring. <laughs> I love that, you know, but it just shows the dedication, you know, of you guys as entrepreneurs, because you, you had to do what you needed to do. And, mm -hmm. and we have, we're having the same, um, we're having the same issue with, with one of our properties and we're like, okay, we're not meeting, we're not at the, we're not meeting our key indicators and what do we need to do? So most of the GPs in that we're like, if you guys need us to go there, you know, get to get mm -hmm turn around quicker um we'll be there like we'll, we'll, well not me maybe my husband but because of my condition but <laughs> but we were willing to go and pull you know pull up our sleeves and do the work um and that is the type of of gps or um invest no i, I wasn't gonna say um i want to say gps that that you'd want for your investors right that that's what i would want for myself like somebody who's gonna do the work to make sure that my capital is protected. Absolutely. So 
kudos to you guys because not a lot of people would do that. <laughs> but I bet it was an experience. Yeah, we learned not a lot of people were willing to do that. Yeah, I mean, so look, we, we were the ones that were there. Yeah, there's, the... there's nine people on that GP team, right? And we're, you know, we were the only ones. We're we're the students, right? We were the students of the we and we still are. We're always we we are always going to be students, right? But but this was a more experienced GP team, right? And uh, Nancy can tell you all about the, the whole story. She loves telling that whole story. But at the end of the day, it was it, we were never partnering with those people ever again. So we're stuck with those people for the next five years. And, and, uh, and but we will, you know, it, it, it's uh, never, ever again. No. It just all goes back to, you know, trust but verify and make sure that you do the due diligence, not just on the deal, mm -hmm. right? The, the diligence has to go beyond that. The, you know, the whole team, everybody that's involved right like what's their experience what's their track record how much do they know are they in this market are they not in this market this is the first asset do they know this type of asset like i have a whole list of like questions that you know moving forward you know that i, I i'm going to make sure that they're all answered right and if somebody doesn't have the the time to answer my questions then we just move on right because like abraham says there's always going to be deals yeah mm -hmm. Exactly. And in, especially where we are at right now, the economy, there, there, there are going to be deals that are they're going to be dropping. So um, it's a good time to be in the real estate space. Uh, I know, Abraham, you, you'll need to go at some point. So feel free to let us know that you need to go because he's going to go out and save lives, people. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> all right. But but I'm going to switch gears here for a minute. So we're talking about the active side part of, of real estate investing. And, you know, like, I love that we talk about this being transparent, because for those who don't know, it takes it is a lot of work. Um, sure, it sounds sexy that oh, you are, in a, you own apartments, you own multifamily, but really the work that goes into that is so much more than what is being shared. So thank you for sharing your experience. And I'm not shy to to, to talk about my experience like we've lost money in, you know like in 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 deals um we've partnered with people who might mm, you know like make questionable so but but then these are the things that make us you know like who's that singer who said if it's not going to kill you it's just going to make you stronger right so it's going to make you a stronger gp but on the on the flip side as a, as passive investors um so i want to talk about you mentioned nancy that your passion is to help nurses get into real estate investing. And the reason I'm, I'm mentioning the passive side of things is because not a whole lot of people would want to do the work that we're doing in the active side. So for passive investors, like what, what do you, why do you think like now more than any time that, that nurses, healthcare professionals, medical professionals, or even not in the healthcare field should be investing and not be relying on their W-2. Because, like, Rochelle, like, sorry. Go for it. Okay, sorry. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Um, but yeah, we, we should never just be relying on our W-2. And I was that nurse, right? I was just relying on my W-2. But, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Like, I can walk out of here and then something happens and then I can't go to work anymore. And then what am I going to do? Right? Like people, I don't, don't, people don't like to think about extremes or worst case scenarios, but that's the reality, you know? I mean, how you watch the news, it's always bad news. We're in the hospital. We have all these patients with all, you know, these conditions is accidents and, and things, right? So you can't just rely on your W2 for that. And plus, you know, then you have your family, right? You have your children as well to take care of, you know, you, you can't leave just your W-2 for your children. You know, you have to do more than just have a W-2. You have to grow that money for them and not even just your children, but the children of your children, right? And so on and so forth. Generational wealth. Generational wealth, yes. Yeah, I agree. Um, but also I wanted to make it a point and I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, pick on our own, our nurses and, you know, medical professionals. So I, I just found out of a, of a new uh, position of a new nursing position, like last two weeks ago, 
virtual critical care. I don't know if you've, you've heard of this, but AI is coming to healthcare. And I'm like, you know, like for the longest time, I think nurses and doctors and PTs and RTs are like, we're not gonna be replaced by AI. Like there's no way a nurse will be replaced because there's no, how can a computer um, do healthcare, be at the bedside and all that. But but Google have already announced that AI is coming to healthcare. They're doing some, I don't know, like what kind of AI stuff that they're doing. But one of the biggest, you're going, Abraham, thank you. Thank you so um, much. Yeah. But, but, but um, you know, uh, Kaiser is, is that hospital. So they're now figuring out a way to to try to do away, you know, with with nurses. And I'm not saying that that nursing is going to go away completely, but what I'm saying is that there are there's technology now that could potentially do that. And so, right. Yeah. And and so now I'm saying, um, so okay, so now because especially I I fear for nurses because we are such a stubborn bunch. And what we know is what we know, and you, and we we hardly you know like what we know we stick to what we know is what I'm trying to say. And the thing is that before we know it, technology is going to take over, and then where 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 will we at? And especially because um, when I saw what happened during COVID, nurses got paid so much. Everybody thought that that was the norm. The the, the norm. Everybody was expecting that it was going to stay that way for the longest time. And now that actually the the COVID, the, you know, the rates that travel nurses were enjoying at the time is no longer what's happening. And now they are so, pe people are so lost. And, and so I was like, well, okay. All right, well, you have time to reset and then find a way that, and now people are also realizing that, oh my God, nursing is not what I thought it's gonna be, that it is. It's actually a lot of hard work. <laughs> um, now they're realizing that, that not all states are like California where you get breaks. Nursing is a tough job. And, I, and this is what I preach to my coworkers and you know, to anybody who would listen, but most especially in the people in the healthcare field is because like I, I wanted to them to understand that this is what you're enjoying now is not going to be there forever, and you have to have a backup plan. And what would that be? What what would that look like? The backup plan? If you have like sure four hundred one k, you're investing in stocks, sure. But at least take a look at real estate investing and see if this is the right thing for you. Um, but what is your experience, Nancy? Like talking to to nurses. Yes, a lot of nurses are very comfortable. It's exactly what you're saying. They're very comfortable, right? They they know they know that nursing is a secure job, right? Like the same mindset, like we're never gonna be replaced. But going back to what you were saying about AI, I was uh I saw a post, somebody was just giving a rating about their assignment, and I don't remember which hospital they were at, but they had like this little, I don't know what to call them, robots that would come and hang blood they were hanging hang blood, blood. Okay. Yes. okay so they're already they're already doing what we are supposed to be doing right hanging blood and and helping them pass meds as well so it's like yeah our, our profession you know with the way the world is advancing you know i don't know at what point when they're not going to need us but yeah a lot of the nurses are very comfortable and and they're scared about investing their money in real estate because it's it's not something that's known like I told you, like at the beginning of, of, of the webinar, I didn't know about real estate. You know, if it wasn't for Abraham, I would have not, I don't know that I would have known about real estate. I purchased my home like one year after, you know, my nursing career, so my nursing career, I purchased my home, but that was it. Like that's as far as I knew, like, oh, I need to be a homeowner. And I think that's what everybody, a lot of the nurses have, you know, like, oh, well, I just want to have a home. But like, there's a lot more that you could do, right? beyond just having a home. Yeah. I think we, you know we're very fortunate that we are in this field that that could that is um that could potentially help us you um make more money than the than the average in the in the profession. Like travel nursing, like what you guys are doing. Um 
you know, you go to different states where maybe the pay is higher and you take advantage of the stipend, but then you're, you're using it in a smart way. You guys, like you're, you guys are saving $2,500 every week because you want to invest that and you make, you, you want to make that money grow. Um, but then again, I'm looking at, um, you know, you and I are part of all this travel nurse forums and we see all this post about, um, about people looking for a way out of nursing because they're tired. And then they're, but then uh, on the same breath, they're asking where, where are the $6,000 per week or whatever per, um, you know, like rates are. So it's like, you know, like take advantage that you are in a profession that pays well, but then you got to be smart about it. So, yeah. you know, like you, you got to be smart about it. You got to put your money to work so that you don't have to, to be in that position where you're, you're constantly having to, to find a job, constantly having to find an assignment that pays the most. So it's, and, uh... This is one of the, my frustrations because I'm like trying to educate all the all the the nurses, um, but somehow I'm not sure. I don't know what you know. Like I I I remember you had called me and you're like, oh, how are you doing with with talking to nurses to get them to invest in real estate? <laughs> yeah, I because I keep hearing I keep hearing a lot like you're wasting your time with nurses, like they're, they're not going to invest, you know? So I kept hearing it left and right. So I'm like, let me talk to Rochelle because I know Rochelle's doing this and I know, you know, she's very successful with this and I know she has nurse investors and I know she's not giving up and I know she has, you know, every Sunday this and she's always providing, you know, valuable information and adding value to, to nurses, right? And you're the cash flow nurse, right? So it's right there in your name. So I, you know, I, I just needed to talk to you because it, it is a little bit frustrating and sad at the same time that, you know, you're giving this opportunity. I, I'm not trying to take your money. I don't need your money. I work my ass off so I can have my money. Right. So I'm not. And it's I think sometimes I think it's like a pyramid scheme as well. And it's like, it's not like just listen to what we're saying. Right. And, and then go do your own research. Don't just depend on, on my word. Right. So I don't know. It, it, it is tough and it's frustrating, but I do get some nurses that are very interested and yeah. very and, and very willing and, you know, open-minded. So you yeah. just have to talk to quite a bit of them and I don't give up on the ones that say no and are not convinced. And right. I just, continue to, you know, slowly plant some seeds and keep watering them. Right. And mm -hmm. that, is, that is also the advice that I got from, from one of my worker, um, sorry, my partners is, you know, like a, a lot of times, and it's not, maybe it's not just with nurses. I've also heard this from, from engineers, um, from IT people that it's just um, human nature to want to see the, the results of your work before they actually buy into it so i'm like all right by all means you know like in the meantime we got to do we're doing what we need to do and you know and and show them what is possible for in real estate investing absolutely yes i had one of my investors recently he's like he's a nurse practitioner he's like Oh my God, you know, like we got our first distribution. I, you know, that gave me like so much relief, you know, just knowing that the money was going to hit my bank and I didn't have to do anything for it. Right. So he was like so grateful. So it's just a matter of like keeping, you know, educating our nurses. Right. So we don't give up. Exactly. So if you are a nurse, if you're on this webinar and you're watching this webinar on a replay or whatever, and you know a nurse who could benefit from it, please forward them this 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 replay <laughs> so that, um, you know, I understand Monica shared on the chat, you know, it's the fear of the unknown. It totally is. It is, it, you know, and but it, but it, if it's something that we could help mitigate, show them what's possible, then Nancy and I have done our job with our colleagues in the healthcare professional, in the he healthcare profession. So I'm gonna switch gears. Um, travel nursing, <clears throat> a lot of people have reached out to me and actually Kalina over here had mentioned something about, uh, oh, it was a private message, um, about housing travel nurses. 
have you guys thought of that like doing you know furnished finders or doing housing for travel nurses we thought about it and doing it in one of our like our four plagues or the six plagues are smaller units here back home but we never moved forward with it because that's a whole other you know type of real estate to learn as well and we're not very familiar with it mm -hmm. um so we we just personally we didn't do it we haven't done it we haven't looked into it but there is a nurse here actually in our hometown that she she does that like she has i think 12 units and they're all airbnbs and they're all for travel nurses so it's very successful with i said that i'm gonna get on a call with her several times and i haven't but it's gonna be one of my goals um, but no i haven't i have not personally we have not looked into it but i'm sure it's very profitable yeah I, because a lot of people have approached me because they know that I'm a nurse, but I'm not a travel nurse. I've not done travel nursing. I, I know of them. Um, we get a lot of travel nurses in at, at my work. So, and people have been reaching out to see, you know, how could they do it? Um, but my understanding is nowadays, and it was it's so different then, but now nowadays nurses can just go find their own um, their own place to stay so whether do you know what is more popular is it more airbnb or furnished finders or do they go through their agency so yeah i think most of the nurses and and the ones that are smart like us you know we find our own housing so that way we can keep the stipend right because they give us a stipend every week for housing and you know we can just we just need to find somewhere to stay um, what abraham and i did this four or five years that we were traveling, we stayed at RV Park. So we have an RV mm -hmm. and a lot of nurses are also doing that. But from the nurses that I've talked to that don't do the RV life like we did, they do Airbnbs for the most part. Airbnb and furnished finders. Mm -hmm. well, somebody asked me, she's like, he's like, what are nurses looking for when, uh, when, when they're looking for a, a, a place to rent? Uh, and I said, anything that is safe, close to the facility, you know, obviously clean. So um, what else? And it, it won't be bad if it's Instagrammable, is what I told him. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. flexibility as well, because, you know, they cancel our contracts That's randomly right. because because you pulled out your phone or whatever, you know, dumb things, right? Or because an IV was infiltrated. Come on, IVs get infiltrated all the time. So for whatever reason, they can just cancel our contract because the hospital wants to. So some flexibility as well is what they look for. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Kalina, I'm going to reach out to you uh, about that for more info. She's wanting more information about the Travel Nurses Forum. Um, great. So, well, um, what kind of projects are you guys doing now, you and Abraham? Right now we are, so Abraham's going back to school. I was telling you earlier, he's going back to school. He starts on Tuesday, actually. He is, his goal is to go to CRNA school. So that's what Abraham is currently working on. Yes, Fran, yes. So that's what he's working on right now. And I know that that's going to benefit us a lot along the way in our real estate journey, right? Not only because, you know, he's going to double or whatever trip, I don't know, I don't know how much money it is, his income, right? But then that's going to put him around a lot of other CRNAs, right? So more potential passive investors. And uh, so he's going to scale back a little bit on the real estate part um, because he's going to be work doing the full-time nursing and then doing full-time school. But that's Abraham. Me on the other side, I am still going to be working as a nurse. I'm not working right now, but eventually I will. Um, and then I collaborating with uh, some other people from the network, some uh, that from our network, Multifamily Mindset just seeing how we can help each other out and, you know, improve my investor relations skills and maybe looking into self-storage as well. I'm interested in that. So I have some books that I need to read and I have, uh, you know, some calls that I have to make with people who've already, you know, experienced with the self-storage, but definitely also looking into multifamily. So what market are you guys looking into? 
for self storage deals? Um, we like the Midwest, and we also like Dallas, Texas. So we like Dallas, Texas. I think that's why you thought I was from Dallas because we like Dallas. We do have a property there in Dallas, and we do like uh Kansas City as well. Mm. That's so cool. Um, so multifamily and then self storage. You're you're looking at deals right now with with your other uh partners in the yes. network. So as far as investor relations, um, maybe we can trade some notes. Um, what are you doing something special for investor relations, or what? How would you describe your role in that? Like, what do you what what do you guys do for your investors? So I do a lot of one on one phone calls, and they're like two hour long calls. Although it's scheduled for thirty minutes, but because it's a lot of education, right? So I do a lot of one on one calls right now. Um, I do have a newsletter that I send out bi weekly on a bi weekly basis as well, and uh, I need to start hosting some like webinars. I'm in the process of creating that as well and setting that up. Um, and here, well, since we're back home for a while as well, we're going to stop traveling for a little bit while Abraham's in school. Um, my, one of my other, our other partners here, he's also here in Bronzeville, we're going to start hosting, uh, in-person events. Nice. Thinking on a bi-weekly basis, but maybe we'll switch over to monthly to begin. On Wednesday, we actually have our first events. So we're excited about that. Oh yay! So that's gonna be it, um in Brownsville, or what? Yes. What's the okay? Um, let's uh, you wanna go ahead and share that info in the chat so that if anybody is close by, they can drop by. It's a real estate meetup yes. every Wednesday. At, and at what time? It will be at six p.m. No, seven p.m. I'm sorry, I already got it wrong. Seven p.m. <laughs> 7 p.m. There you go. Fantastic. So, um, yeah, guys, if you guys have any, any more uh, questions in regards to, I don't know, anything that Nancy could probably answer about travel nursing or real estate investing while you're a nurse, feel free to shout it out or put it on the chat. Um, so with Abraham going back to school, and you doing real estate investing, that, that's going to be quite busy for, for both of you. But, but I'm glad that you guys are doing such a great job. And, you know, like, are you guys going to go to any conferences this coming year? Um, we we have, or I will be going to Hunter Thompson's Racing Race Fest. Race. Yes, next month. Mm -hmm. And then in March, we'll be at Peak Partnership, which is uh, organized by the Multifamily Mindset. Nice. And that's as far as I have right now. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So for me, in, in hopefully in April, uh, I was supposed to go this January, but hopefully in April, we're going to do, we're going to go to the Real um, Residential Assisted Living Conference in Phoenix. And um, which, by the way, is a good time to plug uh, for next Sunday, our guest is Leah Rodriguez, and we're going to be talking about um, residential assisted living. A lot of people have, have requested that I do another one because there was just such great interest on the first one that I did, but it was a, it was a different guest. So residential assisted living um, with Leah Rod Rodriguez on Sunday, and she's going to talk about how she personally underwrites her her assisted livings and they just closed on one so they're going to walk us through like the steps on how to open one and everything but it is another another space that's opening up to a lot of people we're getting a lot of interest in that so um, I'm looking forward in April to knowing more about about this space that's very interesting that's very exciting Rochelle you send me information as well because I one of our like long-term goals for Abraham and I is to also open an assisted living here in our hometown. Yeah, and we want to do it to where we're going to be at a level already that we can do it where it's, you know, like, is it like nonprofit, right? So top of the line, you know, that it's just all like our, our passive income is going for that, right? Like we, the nurses are get paid very well, the techs will get paid very well. 
And like, we don't need to have any profit because we're really going to have our multifamily and our self-storage passive income. That's going to be more than enough to just give away. Wow, that's that's amazing. I, I love that vision. Mm -hmm. well, Francesca has a question for you. I'm glad you guys didn't put those 20 units up for collateral. How has investing in multifamily protected your personal assets? We did not put them for collateral. Yes, we didn't. But Fran, we did sell our seven unit because we wanted to invest that money in, in multifamily. So we wanted, you know, ourselves, we want to be passive investors as well. So the two, the deals that we've done, we invest our own money and that's our goal. That's always going to be our goal. You know, whatever deal we're going to present to our investors, we're going to make sure that our, our own personal money is going to be invested alongside them as well. So uh, we did sell seven units uh, so we could invest in multifamily. Well, thank you for that. Yeah. I, I know. So a lot of times um, we want to see that our GPs also invest in in the deals that they're doing. Um, although I am the first to admit that I cannot do that all the time. But for the most part, and especially, you know, like in deals that I truly, truly think that there's huge growth. You know, we, we also want to put our money in there as, as active investors because we want to also get the passive income from that right like uh, the the returns on the lps so that is always the goal just like you said so fantastic so how do we get hold of you nancy um if we want to collaborate if we if we want to invest in your deals how do we find you yeah so i am very active on facebook and instagram uh, facebook is just my first and last name nancy reina just like there on the screen and then Instagram, oh, I guess I could type it in the chat, right? I'm sorry, I'm being lazy. Yes, and then Instagram is, I'm typing it. And, and no, it's Nancy, actually. Oh, my God, I forgot my own thing. <laughs> Nancy underscore MFRN capital. Like that. And you can find Abraham as well um, on Facebook just his first and last name and on Instagram he's not very active so he has like a hundred messages that are not read so <laughs> better off just reaching out to me <laughs> mm -hmm. right, there you go I mean I've seen um Abraham's you Facebook like he does a lot of due diligence and walkthroughs uh on, on Facebook so that's really cool to see so yes. tell him, yeah hopefully he, he he will find time to do that while he's in school Hopefully. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to be respectful of everybody's time. Um, it's top of the hour. We're going to start wrapping up. Um, but thank you so much, you guys, for joining us this Sunday. Um, thank you. I mean, kudos. I have a huge respect for Abraham for doing this and then dashing off to his shift, his night shift. Uh, tell him thank you so much. We definitely learned a lot from him. And... I am looking forward to seeing a lot more of your projects and hopefully we will get to meet in person in one of these events. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> um, so yeah, so if you guys, if you want to reach out to Nancy, oh, do you have a website or a phone number or an email as well? Okay. I can put my email. If you're watching this replay, all this information will also be included in the email. That's my email Thanks, and our website is just plain and simple, MFRN Capital. There you go, Nancy Reina. Our company is Multifamily RN Capital. I love so. that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I'm just going to do a shameless plug here. We still have openings for our 506C deal in San Antonio. It's a 204, 204 unit multifamily uh, value add multifamily. And just like what Abraham had said, buy right. So we're buying this actually 20,000 below per unit. Um, so actually, is it 20? Maybe I think it's 40 because uh, we're buying it for 80K a door, um, but the comps what, is 100 to 120 a door. So, that's you know, amazing. follow Abraham's advice. <laughs> yes, guys, that's amazing. Yeah, so reach out to me if you would like some more information. But otherwise, y'all, I will see you next week. We're going to have another 
information filled webinar. Come with your questions and hopefully we'll be able to answer them. Miriam, I see you. Thank you so much, you guys, and hope you have a great weekend. Mm -hmm.